Hey truck drivers, I've got some good news for you. You don't have to buy diesel anymore. Yep, your next truck has just arrived and it is 100% battery powered. Yes, this beast is the Windrose E1400. It is a fully electric tractor unit, a big rig unit. And as you can hear, it's running right now. It's super quiet, but we're gonna take it for a drive in a sec. First, let's talk price and range. This is the info you wanna know. Okay, so one of these brand new, you can buy today for 555,000 plus GST, which is about the same price as a top end big rig that runs on diesel. Already it's sounding pretty good. Wait till you hear the range though. I know what you're thinking, oh, it can only do 100 Ks per charge. No, at 49 tons in the real world, this machine in China has been tested doing 670 kilometers on one charge at 49 tons. Don't know about you, but it sounds like the end of diesel is in the air. So right there in front of the camera, that is Ross from Friends, oh, sorry, Ross from E-Trucks. <laughs> we are in the Windrose E1400. Okay, so what's the first thing you've got to do to get us moving? Uh, well, we're more or less done. I've already initiated the motors, um, <clears throat> the door's shut. So now it's just handbrake off and in gear and off we go. So let's talk some specs then. First of all, how much power does this thing have? For the first 90 seconds, it's got uh, 1,400 horsepower, and then it eases back to about 950. And what sort of torque does it have? Uh, 2,200 rated at the wheels. The towing capacity, what can it haul? Uh, rated in New Zealand, GCM 58 tonne. Uh, in China, the 49 tonne, and most of the duration specification or statistics that are out on the truck so far are at China weights, which is 49 tonne. Who would be the target market then? This is, you know, it's obviously, it's not a cheap vehicle, but then it, you said it's about the same price as a, as a Kenworth, right? Yeah, it's the price price of a, uh, of a high-end diesel truck, uh, for sure. So they're um, targeting uh, logistics companies. So this is the same truck that's been in the USA, it's been in Australia. Uh, and it's also been back to China as well. This is a fairly well-traveled truck, but this is this is just a pre-production version, right? Yeah, it is indeed. This, um, this was uh, built earlier this year uh, to go to the States and do their run across uh, one side or the other, and then back to China, a bit of a refurb, and then down to um, down to Australia to do some tech demonstrating. How does this compare to a traditional diesel big tractor unit? Just sitting here with the centre driving position, which they've done just to keep the truck aerodynamic, so it's not too wide. Uh, it's it feels small. It just feels small. You're sitting out in the front here. Your mirrors are nice and close. Uh, the truck it doesn't feel like a large vehicle at all. Well, that makes it interesting. It is a it is what looks like a central driving position, which means that you don't need a left hand drive and a right hand drive version. You can sell this in any market immediately, can't you? Yeah, that's correct. Although this one is actually uh, right hand drive. It's right hand drive by one inch. <laughs> So what they've done for the states where you're not allowed to have a centerline cabin, uh, they have gone, that in the states they sell them left hand by one inch. Gotcha. And for our market, just to be safe, they've gone right hand by one inch. What's the feedback you're getting from your know, traditional diesel drivers? Are they curious? Are they skeptical? Uh, a lot of skepticism, I guess. That People want to see us doing that, porting a trailer. Right. Um, a lot of people are a bit skeptical about the data coming out of China. I went up to the, there myself and went to the JAC test track and we did um, 100 odd kilometres running around and just just to see what the um, energy usage actually was from the right. truck, make sure that the figures were, were genuine and it actually absolutely stacked up. 49 tonnes, 670 k's on a charge. Like even if in New Zealand's terrain with our hills and things, even if you're only getting two thirds of that, that's still a long way. That's past Lake Taupo. Yeah, it is. In New Zealand, with a quad semi on this, you're allowed around 44 tonne, like this truck next to us. Um, we think Auckland to Wellington is quite achievable with just maybe a top-up charge. Um, it might even be achievable with no charging. Well, that's the thing. I, I went on to that. You may have heard of this uh, prestigious research website called Facebook. And uh, I went on there and some of the people were telling me that the, this technology can't possibly work because you'd have to stop and recharge after five hours. But in New Zealand, isn't the law you have to stop for a break anyway after is it five and a half hours? Yeah, correct. The, the driver logbook rules are, uh, are fairly strict and you've, you've got to take um, breaks in, in your work day. You could, you could put in like a, a recharging station somewhere near Waiuru, the, the museum down there. That's past halfway to Wellington. That would, that would sort it out. Just a short stop there, get a break, charge up and boom, there you go. Emission free to all the way down to Wellington. 
there's also a charging station just open up that can fit trucks in, in Turangi, so that'll work as well. Oh, right. So there are, um, there, there's all, those, those things will come as, as the demand grows. Uh, Auckland, Palmerston North and so forth, they're absolutely achievable. You don't have to charge them. And for operators that would prefer to charge behind the fence, uh, this truck is ideal for that. And then they just charge it up in their facility and then put it back on the highway. How long does it take to charge from 10% to full or 10% to 80%, which is normal? Yeah, 20, 20 to 80 is the number that they work on for this truck. And yep. they're saying, uh, if, if you're in that range, you can add 400 kilometers in 35 minutes. This truck's set up to charge um, on both sides. So you can charge left and right at the same time. And so with dual water cool um, CCS2 connections, you can you can put in 960 kilowatts. 900, almost, that's almost a megawatt pumping out of this truck. Is the trucking industry, are they aware of this? Do, do, do typical truck drivers, do they know this stuff exists? Oh, look, I'm not sure we get a lot of looks heading down the highway. Um, it's, it's an unusual looking truck for a start, but this is a prototype truck, but it's not secret. You can see it's got no zebra stripes on it. There's a QR code on the side of the truck if you want to learn more. Just scan away and um, there's, there's no secrets. This sort of seems very comfortable. What's it like from a seating position from your perspective? Oh, look, I, I really like it. There's a few pluses and a few minuses. There always is with um, truck design. So this this truck has eight airbags at the back, and it's also got wish bag, uh, wishbone suspension at the front with airbag suspension at the front. Oh yeah. The cab, because it's so big, is actually rigid to the chassis. Most of the trucks you see running up and down the highway have an air suspended cab as well. So there's one level of suspension this truck hasn't got. And what sort of uh, trailers can it attach? Uh, we've got license to tow quad semis, as we are talking about before, and uh, also uh, long B-double. The flappy paddles here, aren't, you, you might have been thinking they were gears, they're not, that's actually regen. It's regen braking? So you can just add your different levels of regen. There's only so many you can use when you're unloaded, you can sort of, you can feel a little bit of regeneration there, you click it up one more and right. you can feel a bit more and so forth. Okay, so you've got economic, you've got normal mode, and you've got sports mode, or power mode. Sure. Uh, if you're hauling heavy loads, you're climbing hills. Does it, uh, I mean, I'm guessing with the amount of power and torque, it, it climbs the hills effortlessly with a load on the back? I can't imagine why not, with that amount, <laughs> okay. amount of torque and power available. All right. Uh, certainly going up the Bombay's uh, bobtail as we are here, okay. no trailer. That I think we were using 18% of the available power. You might. Oh, no way. Down here, you can see the percentage. I don't know if you can see it from back there, but that, yeah, yep. that currently we're using zero because it's actually regening as we slightly come down. Okay, so this is, again, this is something unheard of for traditional truck drivers is that when you're going downhill, it puts power back into the battery. Yeah, for sure. So and the amount of power, if you've got a heavy load on the back, the amount of power being fed back into the battery instead of being wasted as engine braking or just brake dust and brake heat. It's all being converted back to electricity. Uh, you can see this uh, electronic mirrors on this truck, not physical mirrors, just yeah. Oh, yeah, doing yeah, everything yeah. you can to get the, uh, the the aerodynamics right and also the, the thermal management of the system to shift heat from where it's uh, not needed to where it is needed in the truck, those sort of things so all add up to um, getting no. that extreme duration. I have to mention the elephant in the room, which is the fact that it looks near identical to the Tesla Semi. I'm wondering, like, is that just because trucks that are aerodynamic will send, will most likely have a typical shape, like Boeing, Airbus, that Russian one that crashes, all those aircraft, that's, they all look the same. I can't tell them apart because aircraft all have a shape. Do you think it's the same with trucks? It is, for sure. Look, if, you, um, if you're going to make a, a truck aerodynamic, you've only got a certain amount of wheelbase to work with. So the shape has to be more or less like this. The slope of the bonnet uh, is more or less set to go from the top of the air dam to the front of the truck. If you've got to pinch it this way and you've got to pinch it this way, uh, the truck's going to look the it's same. It's going to look the same, right. So in terms of um, comfort, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, we're able to have a normal conversation in a truck. That's, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. How fast are we going right now? Uh, doing 85. 86. 85, and we're having a normal conversation. It's really cavernous in here. I mean, it's it's a little narrow at the front, obviously, because, like you said, it tapers in. But the roof line's high. Is this able to turn into a bed back here? Yeah, it is. It's a pretty basic sleeper arrangement. Uh, they did that on purpose to send it to the states because that's where a lot of sleeper cabs get used right. a lot. And so they just wanted feedback from people what they wanted, what they didn't want. I think the cab space is eight uh, square meters floor space or something like that. Okay. So you, you, there's a few options you can do you've got that amount of space. I've got air conditioning controls. Is, is this for the whole cabin or is this just for me? I think that's just for you. I think that's actually for the sleeper when you're, um, it might not actually function until the truck's turned off. Okay, right. And I've got USB charging down here, storage, cup holder. What are going on here, man? 
This is trucking in the future. I love it. I might have to get my heavy transport license. This is wicked. Yeah, like it, it's a fun truck to drive. There's no doubt about it. There's three key features that ma matter when you're uh, looking at electric trucks. The first thing is the weight. Is you can stack on as much battery as you like. Uh, one of the opposition trucks out of China will do a thousand k's, but then it weighs 15 tons. So that's right. a lot of weight to display. So you've got to be careful about that. Uh, the second thing is the duration. How far can it go? Are you going to be inconvenienced by the charging speed? That sort of thing. And the third thing is flat out the price. So obviously the electric truck is going to be cheaper to run. The service intervals are longer, that sort of thing. But you've still got to overcome that sticker price yep. when you're starting off with the truck. So those are the three things, the price, the weight, and the duration. The chassis is unique in this truck. The H-frame finishes just in front of the rear axles because there's no torque transfer from the motor to the rear axles. Gotcha. The, the motors are mounted directly to the rear axle. So um, that allows the, the um, chassis to come into just a single bed running forward rather than two and that loses quite a bit of weight. Right. The other thing it does is it gives a lot more space for the battery packs, the Able, sorry, to design a, a battery pack that was designed to exactly configure to the truck, and then they found someone else to, uh, once they bought the cells, to pack those cells in their own proprietary design, uh, and, and that means you're not taking um, shortcuts with your battery pack optimization to make it fit on the chassis. Well, I forgot to ask, what is the battery capacity in this truck? Uh, this one's got 729 kilowatt hours. The trucking companies aren't run by uh, the truck drivers themselves, they're often run by the accountants. So how much would it cost to recharge this truck? If you go to a public charging facility, it's going to be a lot. Yep. Uh, but you know, most of our corporate customers, uh, they won't tell you what they're paying for power. Okay. But it's a lot <laughs> less than, than me, maybe not less than you with your solar array on your roof. But, oh right, yeah. <laughs> uh, I should probably add at this point as I drive around in the back, like Miss Daisy, of this Windrose E1400, that if you have an electric truck, or an electric car, or just a house, you just like living in the 21st century, you should be joining up with Ecotricity. That should be your electricity provider. It is New Zealand's only certified climate positive electricity provider. Wind, hydro, solar, that's where the power comes from. No coal, no gas, only the good stuff. Sign up today, ecotricity.co.nz. Right now, we are getting back on the motorway. I should point out for those watching, this is just going to be a this is a teaser video, just a familiarisation, because this truck's only been legal for like five days. Uh, yeah, well, it got off the boat on Tuesday, so yeah, you're right, around about five days, and uh, we've, we've got a permission to drive it on highway on Thursday, so yeah, only a few days. What's your vibe from how this truck is suited for the New Zealand trucking industry? No one truck can do everything, but there's certainly a, a decent chunk of the market that this truck can cover quite comfortably. And, a lot of fleet owners are looking uh, through what they do because uh, very few trucking companies do exactly the same thing with all their trucks and just where this is going to fit into their fleet. So we've never launched a truck that's had as much interest as this one. I've got to say thanks Ross for uh, tolerating me for half an hour. I really appreciate this. This has genuinely excited me because the, the trucking industry is it's ripe for electrification because we just didn't have the technology until now. Battery tech has never been as good as it is now, and it's only getting better. It's really exciting. As you can probably tell by my enthusiastic <laughs> approach. And there you have it. That is the basics of the Windrose E1400 electric tractor unit, something that was impossible technically 10 years ago, and now it exists. It's the first of many to hit New Zealand shores, so whether you're ready or not, electric trucks are here to stay.